Hello and welcome to my world of stuff. Today I'm going to tell you about how I lost my heart to Starship Troopers. It's time for another retro movie review. Everyone fights, no one quits. We are going in with the first wave! You smash the entire area, you kill anything that has more than two legs, you get me? We get you, sir! But they will face an enemy more devastating than any ever imagined. Here it comes! Ah! He's coming! Mayday, this is Roughneck 2-0. Render attack, we need retrieval now! Someone made a damn mistake. Ah! The bugs laid a trap for us, didn't they? Ah! Prepare for battle and journey to the front lines of the next frontier. Kill them all! Starship Troopers. Hello and welcome back um, to a new video on my channel. First of all, apologies for having been disappeared, having disappeared for a week. Um, I've not been well. I had a bit of a stomach bug last week. I don't know if it was food poisoning or just an early winter bug. But I was a bit rough for a few days and I planned to do something on the weekend. But unfortunately, due to rumbling tummy and various other issues associated with food poisoning, which we won't go into here, um, I just wasn't able to sit and um, put anything together. But I'm back, back. If you like this sort of content, if you like uh, film reviews, books, uh, TV, unboxings, all that sort of stuff, this is the place to be. So why don't you press that subscribe button, which is there or there. Like, leave a message, and we can have some fun. One of the things that I do on this channel is retro movie reviews. If you look back at some of my previous videos, you will see that there are many retro movie reviews of uh, classics from the 50s and 60s. But I'm coming a little bit more up to date with this one with... Starship Troopers from 1997, based on uh, Robert Heinlein's 1959 science fiction novel of the same name. It's directed by Paul Verhoeven from a script by Ed Neumeyer and stars um, Casper Van Dien, Denise Richards, Jake Busey, Dina Meyer, Clancy Brown, Neil Patrick Harris. And it's an extraordinary tale of interstellar warfare with some very... Um, barbed satirical touches. The basic story is, or I think we're in the 23rd century and mankind has ventured out into deep space, but has attracted the attention of an alien species, a bug species that are called the arachnids. They're sort of cross between say, spiders and scorpions. They're quite an aggressive life form. And the intimation perhaps in the story is that they've become aggravated by uh, humanity spreading out across space and they become aggressors. And there's a sort of a, a a sort of like a silent war going on. I mean, we're, we're keeping our distance from the bugs, but things take an unpleasant turn when the bugs launch a massive attack on the Earth by 
firing an asteroid at Earth, which destroys Buenos Aires and kills millions of people. Because of that, the human race mobilises and decides it has to wipe out the aliens on their base, their home planet, Clendathu. Now, the film starts off um, with a 45-minute sequence, really. It starts off with a scene on Clendathu, which is right in the middle of the battle, and it's grisly and it's violent, and people are torn apart, and the bugs attack, and it's gunfire, and it's, it's quite brutal, and it's quite shocking which sets the tone for what's to come later in the film then the first 45 minutes becomes almost like a high school romance a quite a sweet story of johnny rico played by casper van dien who um decides he wants to enlist in the military because in this futuristic uh period um normal civilians don't get the benefits that certain people get citizenship and certain other benefits that people can get by enlisting in the military and this is part of the sort of satirical thrust of the film it's sort of it sort of um, emphasises this bombastic, militaristic American sort of mentality um, with these infomercials that are sort of punctuated throughout the film. This sort of, um, as you saw at the beginning, do you want to know more? Um, this sort of propaganda type thing. Um, when his uh, his girlfriend, Carmen, uh, she's, com she's ferociously determined and ambitious. She wants to become a military pilot. She wants to become a spaceship captain, a starship captain. And that's her focus. And eventually we have the first, the sort of high school shenanigans, if you like. We get their, their ceremony where they um, leave school and they decide what they want to do. And they go their separate ways. It's him and his friend. And there's another girl, Dizzy who secretly has romantic aspirations on Johnny, but he's focused on Carmen because he loves her, but she finds it difficult to say, I love you back to him. And it's all its all quite sort of Hollyoaks, I suppose. It's all quite uh, teen drama, the sort of stuff we see quite a lot of on TV and films these days. But then after about 45 minutes, things take a turn for the darker when war is declared after Buenos Aires is destroyed. Uh, the military are mobilised, the characters all split up into different units, and the story then progresses and becomes more of a war film, but still has the character moments underpinning it um, and this is where the film really excels these extraordinary graphic and bloodthirsty battle sequences first of all on the planet Clendathu when um, the humans go to wipe out the aliens on the planet but they severely underestimate the forces on the planet and they're pretty much routed and then um, they're sent on a, a mission to a, a colony planet which turns out to be a trap and again uh, carnage takes place and eventually they discover that the aliens are controlled by brain bugs and they control everything with their sort of psychic abilities and they determine that the only way to bring the war to an end is to capture one of these brain bugs and try to find out how they tick and that's really the thrust of the rest of the film's extraordinary extraordinary battle sequences which are so graphic you, you get scenes of the bugs which are these ferocious killing machines tearing people apart beheading people, disemboweling people, burning people. It's just incredibly, and it doesn't surprise me that the film was given an 18 certificate of time. I don't know if it's been reclassified since, but the violence is still, it still sort of makes you go, whoa, occasionally, you know, there's a couple of scenes in particular, even now watching it, that made me go, wow, that's, that's harsh, if you like. Um, it's a great film. I haven't seen this for years. It must be a decade since I've seen this film. I loved it back in the 90s when it came out. And I was a bit worried about revisiting it on the big screen on Monday night because I thought it's 24 years old. Obviously, special effects and graphics have moved on a lot since then. You know, is it going to show its age? And I have to say that by and large, it didn't. I think the effects still look terrific. The spaceship scenes still look extraordinarily good. The, the warfare scenes are visceral and unpleasant and bloodthirsty. And the warfare scenes are terrific. The, the aliens look great. Um, it really hasn't aged badly at all. One of the one or two scenes, there's a lot of scenes with CGI fire and things where spaceships explode, and that's never looked particularly good. Um, but by and large, I was completely immersed in it. There was no real point when I thought, oh, that's a dodgy effect. There's a couple of, I think that some of the rendering of the aliens would probably be a little bit sharper today. Um, there's a couple of scenes where they don't quite look, you can sort of see that they're, overlaid onto the action but generally you know I, I can't really fault the effects it still stands up really well and that's important in the film place because it is much more about that than the human side of things the human side is it's fairly superficial stuff you know boy meets girl boy and girl split up um she's attracted to somebody else it's all that sort of mechanics in it but which sort of underpins the action but we're there for the blood and the gore and the splatter and the action which is 
just terrific. And, and as I say, really hasn't dated at all. I think if anything lets the film down, I have to say it's some of the performances. I mean, the cast aren't particularly accomplished. I mean, Casper Van Dien looks the part. He looks like this really chiselled matinee idol. And I think his performance is, is quite decent. And it is surprising he hasn't really gone on to much since then. He's, he's done a few things. He pops up here and there. But he didn't become a big star, which is quite surprising because at the time... We were still in that era of the likes of Harrison Ford and early Tom Cruise. And you would think he would have followed on that route, but never really happened for him. We've got Denise Richards. Um, oh, bless her. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to patronise, but um, she's not great. You know, she's a little bit on the wooden side, should we say. She does her best, and there are scenes where she's acceptable, but she's not a great performer. Adina Mayer is really good as Dizzy, who's the girl who is her rival for Johnny's affection. She's, she's really very good. Jake Boosie, young Jake Boosie, before he went completely tonto. Um, he's great. Um, Clancy Brown is always good to see him. Neil Patrick Harris looking very young as um, one of uh, Johnny's friends who becomes eventually a, a senior sort of military org organiser and intelligence officer. It's a good ensemble cast, but, you know, don't go into Starship Troopers expecting Oscar-level acting because, you know, get that. It, it's... You know, the script doesn't demand that. And to be honest, the cast, I don't think really up to it. But I think they do what they need to do well. But ultimately, uh, for the spectacle. And this is a really fantastically spectacular film. I was, like I said, my main concern going in was, you know, does it stand up today with all the visuals that we get these days, the stuff that we see these days, the way, and do you realise how effects, although they've moved on enormously, it doesn't mean that the effects and, and visuals of the past don't still work because they do and it really works in this film and I'm really pleased that this still looks good uh, I watched it on Blu-ray I'm not sure if there's a 4k version in the UK I'm going to see if I can track it down because it, I'd forgotten that it is a favorite film there's something thrilling about it I think one of the things that possibly lets it down is some of the technology in terms of uh, computers and machine technology you get some quite clunky scenes of people pushing buttons on computer consoles and stuff and we know now that modern films have sort of uh, 3d effects and you know this sort of slightly more busy stuff and this looks a bit clunky in terms of pushing buttons and dials and levers and things that dates it slightly but that's really the only thing if i'm honest where i think that it possibly shows its age it's a great film it's a great science fiction film it's a great action film it's a great war film and it's a great piece of sort of subtle satire on american culture and american propaganda if you're not seeing it um it's not for the for the faint-hearted, if, if you're not one who likes to see blood, there's a lot of blood and, like I say, humans being just ripped to bits by these aliens. But if you, you know, have a stomach for that sort of thing, it's just a great film. And I, like I say, I'm so pleased that it's it still stands up today. Uh, that wasn't the end of the Starship Trooper story, of course, because it, although it wasn't a big box office success, it became on video quite a, a cult success. And it was one of those ones that people bought in the early days of video and DVD particularly. Um... In fact, I seem to remember when I bought it on DVD, it was what they call the flipper disc, where you have half the film on one side, you have to turn it over towards the second half, which is sort of unthinkable. It's particularly these days when the kids don't collect things, they just want to stream everything. So the thought of having to get up halfway through a film and turn a disc over, how unpleasant, how inconvenient. Um, but no, it became a cult success on home video, uh, which led to a number of very low-budget spin-offs. Now, there was a sequel, I think... I can't remember the title of the very first sequel. That was a sort of a horror film which was set on an isolated base that was besieged by the bugs. You don't see a lot of the bugs, but that was much more of a horror sort of film. And then there was Hero of the Federation, which came a bit later on. Uh, and then they did various sort of CGI animated series. So it's it had an afterlife, um, but not a particularly accomplishment. This is the one, the only cinematic one, the only one you need to see. And there are, I believe, even now still talks of a reboot. There, there was a a script commissioned a couple of years ago. I don't know where that is now, but I don't want it. I really don't want it because, okay, the visuals would look better now, but I think that it would probably suffer from a lot of the problems that bedevil a lot of films these days. Um, this is a great film, and if you haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Well, that's uh, my retro review of Starship Troopers. Uh, I know I promised in my previous retro review that I was going to be doing the Incredible Shrinking Man, that will be up next, but I just wanted to watch Starship Troopers and thought, yeah, I'll do a video on that. And as I said, it's my first one back since my little enforced break, so um, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's also my 100th video. Now, people did say to me, what are you going to do for your 100th video? Going to do a big spectacle? And I thought, 
Nah, let's just do something normal. Which is what I've done. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, thumbs up. And I will see you soon for more stuff. I'm seeing June on the weekend, so there will certainly be a review of that up soon. And I'm hoping to catch up with Venom, Let There Be Carnage, even though I detested the first one. I'm sure I'll detest this one too. Not that I'm you know, foreshadowing or, or prejudicing myself, but... Uh, anyway, that's me done for now. Until I see you next time, you know what they say. You keep taking the stuff. Bang!